Going to have some fun today. We are going to make one bold and occasionally one off the wall prediction for every single player on the New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1132 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. So I want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So obviously very deep into the offseason here, although we are starting to get, you know, very much into the, the back nine of the offseason, so to speak, because Ranger hockey is only about three weeks away as I'm recording this, about three and a half weeks, give or take. And I figure do something a little bit different today. Let's have some fun. What we're going to do in today's episode, we're going to take a look at what I project to be the Ranger opening night roster. And for all 20 of those players, we're going to make one bold and possibly an off the wall kind of uh out there kind of a prediction for all 20 players so we got 20 players to cover we only got one episode to do it let's go ahead and hit the ground running here we're gonna start with the goalies and the defensemen you know just kind of switch things up or we're doing our best and worst case scenario and we're going from the uh you know the, the offseason series the best and worst case scenarios we started with the uh, forwards there. We're working our way to the defenseman. We'll do the opposite here. Let's start with the goalies. Igor Shesterkin. I'm actually going to do two bold predictions for Igor Shesterkin for this upcoming season. The first one, he scores his first career goal. I mean, how could it be anything else, right? Um, you know, he's obviously been close a couple of times and a uh, very skilled puck handler for a goalie is Igor Shesterkin. I mean, he's missed the open net by maybe a foot on a couple of different occasions. And uh, a couple of those have been at home and, and you can feel the crowd start to react. Anytime there's an empty net uh, against the Rangers and Igor Shesterkin, the puck gets anywhere near him, that anticipation starts to rise. I think this is the season he makes it happen. But another one for Igor Shesterkin, bold prediction. This one's not nearly as much fun. I do not think that the Rangers and Igor Shesterkin are going to come to terms on a contract extension between now and the start of the regular season. Doesn't mean he's going to leave the Rangers when the season is over, but I just don't think that's going to happen. And we're actually going to elaborate about that in the next episode, uh, why I don't think an extension is coming this offseason for Igor Shesterkin. Moving right along here to Jonathan Quick, the other Ranger goalie, back for his second year with the Rangers. Bold prediction for Jonathan Quick for this upcoming season. He is going to sign a one-year extension in the middle of the season for a second straight year. It really looked like Jonathan Quick found a way to turn back the clock last season. And on one hand, you know, he's getting up there 38 years old. That's why it's a bold prediction, though, right? I think he's going to play well enough that the Rangers are going to feel good, uh, good enough about what they're getting from him. And he will sign a one-year extension with the Rangers. That's also a way, if you're the Rangers, to... Get just a slight little edge uh, on Igor Shesterkin when it comes to contract negotiations. I don't think it'll really affect things that much. But you could always say, well, we've got Jonathan Quick under contract. We could go with some combination of him and Dylan Garand. Again, I don't think the Rangers will actually do that. I don't think that Igor and his camp are going to fall for that either. But I think for all those reasons, Jonathan Quick, look for him to send another one-year extension during the season. Switching our attention to the Ranger defenseman, Adam Fox. I'm going to say Adam Fox gets new career highs across the board this season. You know, it's easy to forget just how young Adam Fox still is. He just turned 26 years old. Feels like he's been here forever, going into year six with the New York Rangers. Uh, it's entirely possible that he right now, though, is just starting to enter the prime of his career. I mean, again, he's only uh, getting into his mid-20s at this point, and you got to figure he's still got a lot of phenomenal hockey ahead of him. It's kind of weird to predict a career season from somebody with uh, – you know, a Norris Trophy, three-time All-Star. He's been in the top five for the Norris in all of the last four seasons, but that's what I'm going with. Career season and career highs across the board for Adam Fox. Moving along to his defense partner, Ryan Lindgren. I'm going to say a new career high in games played for Ryan Lindgren, which is bolder than you might think because Ryan Lindgren last year played in 76 games and three seasons ago, uh, third most recent season, he played in 78 games, which is really not too bad for somebody that you know has this reputation of always being hurt and such an injury risk. I don't think those concerns are unwarranted, but just throwing it out there, he has played a lot of games over the seasons. And the fact that he is in a contract year, he's a UFA at the end of the season, he's going to want to 
be out there on the ice and show the Rangers and any other potential suitors that he can stay healthy and thus help himself when it comes to his next contract. Moving right along, Keandre Miller. I think with Miller, my prediction for Miller, bold prediction, he's going to show a newfound mean streak this year, and he will post a new career high in hits. Those two things kind of go hand in hand. He had 148 hits last year. The season before that was 162. That was his career high. I think he beats that uh, this upcoming season. You'll see a new career high in hits from Keandre Miller. And there are times where, you know, Keandre Miller, that intensity will come to the surface and it'll kind of get brought out of him. And all of a sudden, you know, he ramps up the intensity for this game or that game. He's very protective of his goalies. That's something that I've definitely noticed uh, from Miller over the years. But yeah, man, I think uh, Keandre Miller, now that he's been in the league for a while, you're going to see him play with a newfound mean streak this season. Not that it's something that's been completely lacking for him, but I think it'll just be amplified that much more uh, for this upcoming season. Braden Schneider. You can probably figure out by the order that I'm doing this what my prediction here is going to be. He is going to start next season in the top six over Jacob Truba, and he is going to stay there for the rest of the entire season. I've been kind of throwing out this idea that maybe the Rangers this upcoming season as sort of a make good and kind of like an everything's peachy kind of a deal, they might put Jacob Truba back into the top four over Braden Schneider. And on top of that, you know, he's the captain. You show some respect for your captain and all that good stuff. The more I think about it, though, the more I feel like it's pretty obvious that Braden Schneider has eclipsed Jacob Truba. And with that being the case, I think that Peter Laviolette's not really going to mess around with this. I think he's going to go with his best four defensemen in the top four. And he's going to put Braden Schneider there. Um, on the second pairing with Keandre Miller. That's how they'll start the season. And apart from maybe the occasional shakeup, I think, you know, Braden Shares going to be pretty firmly entrenched in that top four, and he'll be uh, Keandre Miller's defense partner going forward. We saw, um, you know, that pairing have success last season. I think there will be more of that this season. Moving along to the third pairing, Zach Jones. Zach Jones, my bold prediction, he will establish himself as the point man on the Rangers' second power play unit, and the Rangers are going to treat him like an Adam Fox light. And what I mean by that, if anything happens to Adam Fox, if there's, I mean, knock on wood, if there's any injury or anything, you will see the Rangers turn to Zach Jones and look for him to do all the things that Adam Fox does. Obviously, not quite at the same level, but you'll see Zach Jones on the top pairing at 5v5. You will see Zach Jones on the Rangers' top power play unit, much in the same way that Eric Gustafson was last season. But I think they'll look to Jones there, and uh, Jones is going to have a nice season. That's not really part of the prediction. I'm just kind of throwing that out there as a little bonus here. Uh, the last Ranger defenseman that we project to be in the Ranger opening night uh, lineup, of course, Jacob Truba. Talked about him just a second ago. I'm going to say a bold prediction for Truba is that the talk of you know everything that went on this offseason, him being possibly traded, possibly waived, possibly uh, bought out. You know, some of those things are fan created, but there was certainly uh, some fire where, where there was smoke there. Um, so I, I think that the talk of all those things is going to die down considerably in a very short amount of time. We could say what we want about how Jacob Truba performed last season, especially in the playoffs. I said my piece on that many times. No need to rehash that. But I do think Jacob Truba, as the Ranger captain, has shown that he's equipped to handle situations like this. I think, look, there's going to be questions. I mean, the media will have some questions for Truba about that whole thing at training camp. But I think you're going to see it die down pretty quickly. And I think Truba is going to handle it very well and uh, not throw anybody under the bus or pour any more gasoline on that, you know, already burning fire. So those are the goalies and defensemen. We're, we're through those. We're going to shift our attention in just a minute to the Ranger forwards. We'll start with the top six. We'll work our way down to the bottom six to close out today's episode, and we'll do all that fun stuff in just a second. All right, we just want to take a minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on the great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of seats. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. You also have all-in prices. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at the checkout. And also, outstanding seat views. You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. And don't forget about the lowest price guarantee either. Lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. 
What time is it? It's game time. All right, we just want to take a minute, as always, to thank you guys for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And for your second listen, you want to check out the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day with national experts and local insight on every team in the league. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so let's go ahead. Keep everything rolling here like I was talking about. Again, we're going through some bold predictions, occasionally off-the-wall predictions for every single Ranger player that we expect to be on the opening night roster. We're going to move. We covered the goalies and the defensemen. We're moving on to the top sixers. Chris Kreider. My bold prediction for Chris Kreider this year, he is going to lead the Rangers in goals. He had 39 goals last season. That was second on the team to Artemi Panarin, who had 49. So obviously, he's got some ground to make up on the bread man. But you think about all the different ways that Chris Kreider can score. He scores on the power play. He scores off the rush. He'll get a couple. He'll get like two or three shorthanded goals on top of that. Uh, He's got a really nasty shot that he can score with. Um, He can score on deflections. He's a threat to score in overtime. Him and Mika Zibanejad tend to start a lot of the overtime period. So that also presents a couple more opportunities to Chris Kreider every single season. But the way I see it, you know, again, 39 goals, that's no joke. I mean, that's enough to lead a, a team this team or that team in goals any given season. Of course, you also had Artemi Panarin scoring a career-high 49 goals. But I just get the feeling Kreider's goal uh, total might increase a little bit this season. I I think that him and Mika are going to have good chemistry with Riley Smith. Hopefully, there's finally uh, some permanence there on that top line. I think all signs point to at least a slight uptick in Chris Kreider's goals. And Artemi Panarin, I mean, it's going to be tough to pass the bread man, but I could see him scoring fewer than 49 goals this season. That was a career high by a wide margin. Of course, a lot of it was due to the fact that he was shooting more, but we know that Panarin, he's a passer. He likes to set up his teammates for goals, and I think Kreider might be the guy. Very good chance. It's a bold prediction, but I'm going to go with that, him being uh, the goal leader for the Rangers at the end of the season. Mika Zibanejad. I'm going to say Mika eclipses the point-per-game mark by a pretty safe margin this upcoming season. Everybody's talking about how, oh, Mika, he's coming off a bad season. He's over the hill. and He's this and that. Mika's the bandage had just turned 31 years old. Let's not act like this guy is 38 or 39 years old and on his last legs and uh, writing the final chapter of his NHL career because that is not true at all. He's got a lot of good hockey left. And on top of that, everybody keeps talking about this down season. And look, by Mika's standards, yeah, that probably was a down season. Uh, it was also a season where he had 72 points in 81 games. There's a lot of players in this league that would kill for numbers like that. Uh, He was a point-per-game center uh, for three of the most recent four seasons before, you know, this last one where he did not reach that mark. Career high, 91 points in 82 games the season before the one that just ended. So I think for sure, Mika Zibanejad, uh, getting back to being a point-per-game player, very much within reach uh, for this upcoming season. Riley Smith. I'm going to say, bold prediction for Riley Smith, he becomes popular among Ranger fans for this upcoming season. And the reason I say that is a lot of us, like, like we kind of look at Riley Smith. It's like, okay, you know, he's, he's a solid player. He's all right. I'm not sure it's exactly what the Rangers needed. That's how I feel. And talking to some of you, I, I feel like the consensus is sort of the same. But Riley Smith over the years has been a productive player. And if he can kind of uh, mesh with Mika and with Kreider and solve the issue of that top line right wing, at least for one season, He is only under contract for one more season, but he's the kind of player that I think is going to get over with Ranger fans. On top of that, he's got very good speed. Uh, He's somebody that can contribute on both special teams unit. He is a well-rounded, solid player. So I think, you know, Ranger fans, all of us, I include myself in this, there's times where we tend to favor the young guy, the homegrown prospect. Oh, why are they bringing this, you know, 37-year-old? And Smith is only 33. It's not like he's ancient. But that thought process is there for a lot of us. And I just feel like he's going to exceed expectations this season. And uh, against all odds, he's going to win over some Ranger fans uh, this upcoming campaign here. So we move to the second line, Artemi Panarin. Now, of all these bold predictions I'm making, this is going to be the one that is probably the most over the top. And I'm not even sure if I believe it myself, but whatever. We're having some fun here. I'm going to throw this out there. Artemi Panarin, this upcoming season, will get into a fight. We saw in the playoffs this past year, when they were up against the Capitals, you had TJ Oshie basically shadowing Panarin and was constantly running his mouth and mouthing off to him. And look, there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, it's hockey. There's going to be some trash talk. And especially a series like that, you know, the Rangers 
heavy favorites. Caps got to do what they have to do to try to stay in the series and make it a series. And then, of course, the Rangers swept them. But if you guys noticed, there was a situation, don't remember what game it was, but, you know, Oshie had been going after Panarin pretty much the entire series. And it's during a play stoppage. And all of a sudden, Panarin turns around and had, I mean, he had like a different look in his eyes. And he started to like do the the hand wiggle thing that these players do when you're thinking about maybe getting into a fight. I don't know that it was like that far away from potentially happening. It would have been absolutely wild. And frankly, I could do without Artemi Panarin getting into a fight because he's not the biggest guy out there and he is immensely important to this team. We can't have him getting injured uh, in a fight, but I don't know. We saw him play with a little bit more edge last season. I don't think it's completely out of the realm of possibility. Maybe it's TJ Oshie. We also saw Panarin in that playoff series absolutely unload on TJ Oshie with a vicious but clean hit in open ice. So put Artemi Panarin down. The bullish prediction I'm going to make today, uh, I, I believe that would be his first career fight if it does happen next season. It certainly hasn't happened with the Rangers. Uh, Vincent Trocek. We're going to cheat a little bit here. It's not so much for the upcoming season. It's for the upcoming year, the upcoming calendar year. Vincent Trocek will be named the next captain of the New York Rangers. And again, I don't expect this to happen going into the season. I think Jacob Trouba is going to be here. I think he'll still be the captain. But next offseason, one way or another, with all the free agents that the Rangers have, the Rangers are going to have to move on from Jacob Trouba. And when that happens, they need a captain. I think Vincent Trocek is your guy. Uh, Alexi Lafreniere, to close out the second line here. Lafreniere is going to have a 35-35 season. He is going to meet or eclipse 35 goals. He is going to meet or eclipse uh, 35 assists. He was very close to 30-30 this past year, 28 goals, 27 assists. And now he's he's built up some confidence. You know, the, the weight is probably off his shoulders at least a little bit. And he's very well familiar with his two line mates, Artemi Panarin and Vincent Trocek. You know, that was a first-time line last season. And it was one of the best lines in the NHL. Imagine what these guys can do now that they've built up the kind of chemistry that they've built up over the past season. So give me a 35-35 season for Alexi Lafreniere. A lot of people were talking about point per game. I could see him falling just short of that, but 35-35, put Lafreniere down for that uh, for next season, this upcoming season. Moving on to the third line, or again, these are projections. These are what we think are going to be the lines to start the season. Will Cooley. I'm going to stick with what I said in a recent episode we did on him. We're going through our best and worst case scenarios for every player on the New York Ranger. Will Cooley bags 20 goals, for this upcoming season. He had 13 last year as a rookie and did that without, you know, a ton of ice time battle of 11 minutes of uh, ice time per night. You got to figure he'll get more ice time. He'll be shooting a little bit more frequently. And I also got to give a shout out here to a fellow Ranger podcast. That would be puck rock Rangers. You know, they're just getting underway with their podcast, but they're doing some fun stuff. And they reach out to me on Twitter. Apparently, in their most recent episode, they predicted that Will Cooley will get 25 goals in a season. So they're even more ambitious than I am. But if nothing else, you've got at least two Ranger uh, podcasts here that are very bullish on what Will Cooley can do for this upcoming season. And by the way, check out Puck, Puck Rock Rangers. Puck Rock Rangers. Uh, check them out on YouTube. They're just getting underway with their podcast. Moving on to the third line center. That's going to be Philip Edel. I'm going to say Philip Hedl stays healthy this season. I don't know. I was going to go super bold and say he plays all 82 games, but I just can't take it that far. The reason I'm throwing this out there, though, is what we discussed on our recent best and worst case scenario with Philip Hedl. Concussions are so unpredictable and so volatile. I mean, we, we could have Philip Hedl, if we're being honest here, Philip Hedl's career could easily be shortened by his concussion history. There's also another scenario where it's not much of a problem for him for the rest of his career. And he gets over it and he goes on to have, you know, a really solid career for himself. So it's impossible to predict when it comes to concussions or very difficult to anyway, I'm going to be glass half full. I'm going to go with the, uh, the option that is a good thing for the Rangers. And I'm going to see Philip Hedl plays for, I'm going to say 75 games for this upcoming season. Um, if there's anything concussion related, you know, they'll err on the side of caution and, um, you know, any other injury could happen or whatever it might be. Um, but Philip Hedl put him down for 75 games, being very optimistic on this one for the New York Rangers next season. Uh, I'm also realizing that uh, we have dived into the bottom six here. So we're going to take a quick break. We will be back and we will continue today's episode. We'll wrap up with uh, the rest of the third line. We've got one more player that would be Capo Caco. And then we've also got uh, the three players that I believe We'll make up the Ranger fourth line. A couple other things to wrap up today's episode as well. And uh, like I said, we will get to all that in just a second. All right. So with all that said, let's go ahead and move on to the 
final player of the third line, and I've got that as Capo Caco to start this upcoming season. You know, with Caco, I feel like at this point, you could make any prediction for Capo Caco in one way or another. It's a bold prediction because if you predict him to do well and, you know, shatter career highs, that's a bold prediction because he hasn't done that so far in his career. There have been flashes here and there, but he hasn't become the player that we were all hoping that he would become. And if you go in the opposite direction and say, well, he's not going to do anything or he'll be off this team by the trade deadline, uh, that's pretty extreme too for somebody that was a former number two overall pick. So what I'm going to go with here, I'm going to go with Capo Caco ending up with the lowest time on the ice per night of his career. Last year was a new career low for Capo Caco. He averaged 13 minutes, 17 seconds of ice time per night during Peter Laviolette's first season there. His previous career low before that was 14-17, and that was when he was a rookie. So you've had a drop-off of a minute, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you add up all the games, you know that that's not insignificant. Um, the reason I think this, I don't see Capo Caco cracking the top six very often this upcoming season. I think that Riley Smith will get the first chance. And if they go with somebody else, they could go with one of the young kids, you know, the, the kid line 2.0, whether it's somebody like Cooley, maybe Offman, if you if you really want to, you know, shoot for the shoot for the moon there. Um, you know, the, there could be somebody else that they go to before Kako. So I don't think he's going to get a ton of time in the top six. He's not going to kill penalties. We know that. Uh, he will have a very minor role at best on the power play. No chance for the top unit. He might squeak onto the second unit. We will see. And he's not somebody that's going to be on the ice all that much at the end of the game, whether the Rangers are up by a goal or down by a goal um, with a minute and a half, two minutes, two and a half minutes ago. I don't know that Capo Caco, I mean, you could put him out there um, if the Rangers were you know, up by a goal because he, he is a good defensive forward. But there seem to be other guys that the Rangers go to in that situation before Capo Caco. So I think you're going to see a situation where Caco has a new low in time on the ice per season for this upcoming season. We'll see how it goes. And I still think he can contribute in certain ways to this team, but I don't know. I, I don't know that that ceiling for Kako is as high as we once thought that it was. I hope I'm wrong about that. Moving along to the fourth line, left wing, Jimmy VZ. Jimmy VZ, through essentially no fault of his own this upcoming season will eventually become the Ranger 13th forward. And he'll be the guy that on certain nights might be the healthy scratch, might be in and out of the lineup at certain times. I just feel like the Rangers have a couple of forwards who are knocking on the door, namely Brandon Offman and Brett Burrard. I think we're going to see those guys this upcoming season. And when that happens, if one of those guys goes into the lineup, then somebody has to come out. And if everybody's healthy, like who would it be that comes out of the lineup? It could be Matt Rempe on certain nights, you know, certain nights where you're not expecting trouble and you just don't feel like you need him. Um, it could be Sam Carrick, but then you would need a center. Um, and Offman and Burrard both play wings. So you wouldn't put them into the lineup and take a center out of the lineup most likely. So I feel like at one time or another, it might end up eventually being uh, Jimmy Vesey, but we'll see how that goes. Sam Carrick, the new Ranger fourth line center. They bring him in uh, through free agency. I'm going to go bold prediction for Sam Carrick. He eventually loses his spot to Johnny Brodzinski. Right now, the way it's set up, it kind of seems like Johnny Brodzinski is sort of the odd man out, and he might start the season as a 13th forward. I don't know this for sure because I haven't watched Sam Carrick play a whole lot. You know, he's... He's been in the Western Conference, and I'm not exactly, you know, watching the Oilers in the playoffs this past year. I'm not exactly, you know, zeroing in on Sam Carrick. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like eventually you'll see Johnny Brodzinski eclipse Sam Carrick because Brodzinski just feels like a more dynamic player, a little bit more of a scoring touch, uh, a faster player for sure. I know Carrick brings a lot of value, or some value, at least killing penalties. I don't know. To me, Johnny Brodzinski, we've seen this story before with him. He's always the odd man out of the lineup. He's always squeezed out. And he always finds a way to get back in there. So Johnny Brodzinski, uh, he's my pick. Or rather, uh, I mean, th this is really about Sam Carrick, but it ties into Johnny Brodzinski as well. We're, we're kind of doing a two for one here. Uh, the bull prediction for Carrick is that he eventually gets squeezed out of the lineup in place of Johnny Brodzinski. And we've got one more forward to talk about, and that's uh, Matt Rempe, the, the ever polarizing Matt Rempe um, coming into this upcoming season. Look, we know he's going to fight. We know he's going to hit. We know there's certain games where uh, he'll be in the lineup. Maybe other games he won't be in the lineup, depending on what the matchups are and how much trouble you're expecting from your opponent. I'm going to say Matt Rempe for this upcoming season gets 15 points. It's not going to be a bold prediction if I say he fights this guy or fights that guy. We know he'll fight anybody on any given night. Uh, this prediction, of course, is contingent on him making the team to start the upcoming season. 
I'm going to say, though, that Matt Rempe, yeah, this upcoming season, I think he knows what he's doing with the puck and in the offensive zone a little bit better than he gets credit for. 15 points for Rempe. And I know a lot of people might look at his time on the ice and think, oh, there's no way that could happen. You got to remember, his time on the ice last year, which is barely above five minutes, that's greatly affected by the fact that, A, it was a small sample size, I believe 17 regular season games for Matt Rempe, and B, two of those games he was ejected out of almost instantaneously. Uh, the game against the Devils, where he ended up getting suspended, he only played 13 seconds in that game. And then the game against the Devils again, when they played them again, and you had that five-on-fight to start the game, he had two seconds of ice time in that one. So that weighs it down. He'll get a little bit more ice time this year, and I think he'll take advantage of it and probably surprise some people in that department. And I hope he does, because that would just be awesome to see you know this, this physical, tough player um, you know contribute in that way as well but also to kind of silence some of the, the reindeer haters out there, people that don't like Matt Rempe, and he's just a goon. He's just there to fight and this, that, and the other thing. I think there's more to Matt Rempe's game uh, than just fighting and the big hits, but we shall see going forward. I uh, figure we could pretty much call it there for today. Again, tried something a little bit different here today. Hopefully you guys, uh, you know what? Leave your own bold predictions in the YouTube comment section. I'll see what you guys came up with. Also want to mention the Fantasy League. Of course, uh, we are still... Hearing back from everybody from last year, if you played last year and you want to save your seat in the league, then definitely get in touch with me sooner rather than later. If you did not play last year, also get in touch with me. We'll save your spot in line. People that don't return last year will be replaced by people that are new this year and raring to go and uh, excited to join the Fantasy League. Definitely looking forward to that. We'll set a draft date uh, for Fantasy at some time in the future as well, probably right before the start of the regular season. Uh, but yeah, figure we could pretty much call it there for today. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.